What's up everybody, welcome to this tutorial, part of our series Tutorial Tuesdays. And yeah, let's get right back into it. Uh, I'm gonna jump into Inkscape. What we're gonna be doing today is showing you how to create a sign for our tutorial booth. So later on in the series, you'll see our awesome tutorial booth where we'll be filming a lot of our new tutorials. So um, as part of our tutorials, uh, we thought why not include the making of uh, the sign that we want in our tutorial booth. So today's episode is about setting up the artwork for our sign to be laser cut. So we're going to be touching on how to design in Inkscape, uh, things like bitmaps, what are bitmaps, what are vectors, um, how do we convert bitmaps into vectors. So those are the type of things that we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So let's dive right in. We're going to start off by vectorizing our logo. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in the JPEG um, of our logo. Just go ahead and click OK. So there it is. So at the moment, it's just a JPEG. It's a bitmap. You would have heard me say that word. So it's basically made up of pixels. So we want to vectorize it and basically create a vector, which is made up of an object. It's like lines. Um, and the great thing about creating a vector is it, it doesn't pixelate. It's, it's made of pure lines, and it can scale to any size without pixelating. So it's a really, really handy tool. So without having to redraw this entire logo as a vector, I can go ahead and use a tool in Inkscape called Tracing Bitmap. So um, I'm gonna go ahead to the top here, I'm gonna go to Path, and I'm gonna select Trace Bitmap, and the window should pop up on your right-hand side, or maybe it pops up somewhere in your, on your screen. And basically, make sure that it's selected on Brightness Cutoff, it might say 450. Um, you can kind of play with this unit, 450 should, should give you an accurate trace, but um, you can increase it to 800. It's important to know though that the image that you're using to trace needs to be relatively high resolution. So it needs to be relatively high quality and it needs a high contrast. So here it's black and white, so this should trace um, quite easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OK. And uh, you'll notice the boundary box, which is this dotted, dotted lines around the thing would have changed there so to highlight the new trace. So I'm gonna click and drag that off. So the old uh, JPEG is still there. So if we zoom into the new one, we'll notice that these lines are nice and clean and you can keep zooming in and you're pretty much never get any distortion because this is now a vector. Whereas here you can see the, the blurry edges, which is uh, the pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the image. Now, in terms of the logo, I actually only am after the, the logo mark, not the text. So I need to get rid of that. So a quick way to do that is I've selected the shape. I'm gonna go ahead to the left-hand side and select this node tool. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all the nodes that I don't want. Now I notice these little boxes that basically make up the vector. So I've selected the maker space, which is what I wanna get rid of. I'm gonna go ahead and collect delete. Um, click delete rather. And I'm gonna basically select that tool and move it to the center. So that's great, that's exactly what I'm after. Now I've got that logo and now we need to draw a shape. So I'm gonna go ahead to the left hand side and you'll notice there's a star with a pentagon in the background. And basically I'm gonna utilize that to draw our uh, hexagon. So it's selected on the, hexagon, the pentagon tool, but here it's specified as six because I've used it before. Yours might say three and start drawing a triangle, but you basically wanna make sure that says six. And basically if you click and drag, you're gonna draw a really nice hexagon. So I need it to be oriented that way and I want it to snap on a, on a vertical axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and push control and it will wanna lock on um, a specific angle. So I wanna lock it on that vertical angle and basically release. Click the arrow and now I've got my shape. So at the moment it's a smart shape. Basically it's got information about it. So if you double click on it, you can change the amount of corners. So if I wanted to triangle, I could click three, um, but I'm gonna push control Z and keep it as my hexagon. And I'm happy with that shape. That's the shape I want. So I'm gonna go and now I need to make this a path. I need to be able to work with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and to path and I'm gonna click on object to path. And that's basically now made that a path. So if I double click on that now, it'll just have nodes making up the shape. So now I can go ahead and select this to the side. Now I need to change the size of this to the sign, sign size that I need. So I've got about a 1.2 meter working space where I can hang the sign. Um, so I was thinking I need to make it like relatively big. Um, a few constraints to remember. So first of all, we're gonna be working in millimeters. So you can set your, your, your units to whatever units you wanna use, but we're gonna be working in millimeters. Um, our sign does have a constraint because the laser bed is only 1.3 meters by um, 
0.9 meters. So that's 1,300 millimeters by 900 millimeters. And so that means that our sign can't be bigger that, than that because we won't be able to laser cut it otherwise. So we need to make sure that as we are designing our, our graphic, that it doesn't exceed those limits. So we're gonna know those constraints from the beginning and then be able to design accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that um, 850, which is 50 miles short of the maximum cutting size on our laser bed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the logo and I'm gonna make the height of the logo 650 millimeters. Uh, you'll notice the logo is behind the shape. Um, don't stress about that. You can select both of them and move them across and basically just select the logo and you'll see these tools here and this basically allows you to push layers up or down. So you'll see here array selection to top. If you hover over the tools they generally give you a good indication of what that tool does. I'm going to go ahead and click that and it's going to pop the logo onto the top and now basically I need to center that logo. So I could spend time trying to drag it and squint and look and make sure that the logo is in center but there's a tool that can really help us with that. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. Head on over to the top and click on object, scroll down and you'll see align and distribute and that's exactly what we're after so we're going to go ahead and click that and then you'll notice here on the right hand side it's popped up and there's all these little tools and icons so basically there's this tool here with uh, two parts coming together to align and it says center on vertical axis so I'm going to go ahead and click that and it's going to center both the elements on a vertical axis and that's awesome that's exactly what we want. And the icon below does the same thing, but on a horizontal axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect that. And then there we go, we've got our shape perfectly centered. So now for the laser cutter, this could be, could be fine. The laser cutter could probably cut this out, but we wanna be good designers and we wanna design properly. So we actually wanna end up with one element with the logo cut out of the shape. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take this logo and we're gonna cut it out of the, the, the pink hex again here. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna go on over to our node tool and we're gonna go and select the logo. And once we've selected the logo, we're gonna hold control and we're gonna select the shape. Um, sorry, not control. So we're gonna select the logo, we're gonna hold shift and select the shape. That basically allows us to select multiple, multiple objects. So once we've selected both and they're in the node tool, we're gonna go up to path and you'll notice these different tools here and we're after the, the one that says difference because basically we want to take the logo and difference it from the shape. And we're going to go and click on difference and you'll notice that that logo will now cut out of that shape. So now we actually only have one element with the logo cut out of the hexagon shape. And that's pretty much what we're after guys. So that's pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a DXF which is the file format which the laser uses. I'm going to say file save as, drop this arrow down and look for DXF click DXF and the makerspace sign, that's fine, we can save that as that name. We're going to say OK and so here for the laser cutter if you're using a, a sign, if you're trying to make a sign for a laser cutter and wanting to use laser cutting, for our laser cutter we have to make sure that these two boxes are unticked and you want to make sure that your base unit is the same as your unit that you're using in your workspace, otherwise it will mess around with the sizing of your objects. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead, OK, um, so I've already saved one in a previous version before this before we shot this tutorial, so I'm going to go and say replace. And so we've got a working file that can be laser cut. So this sign will go ahead and uh, be implemented in our awesome new tutorial booth, which you guys will be learning about and seeing in our upcoming episodes. So stay tuned to the next episode where we actually laser cut the sign and build it using um, electronics and LEDs. Cool guys, so hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Um, just a bit further on tutorial Tuesdays and what we're trying to do. Uh, we're going to try and create at least 22 episodes for Tutorial Tuesdays and every Tuesday we'll be publishing a tutorial. Um, obviously we've used the sign as one of the first tutorials. Um, stay tuned for the next episode which will be um, the actual building of the sign um, that, we, that we designed today. And yeah, basically the goal of this tutorial was to create an awesome sign, to create an awesome space in order to record really cool and interesting tutorials for you guys. So you guys definitely want to stay tuned, subscribe, hit that like button and please leave any comments for maybe future tutorials that you want to learn, maybe you didn't understand something, please leave a comment. Also if you check us out on Instagram, at the Makerspace, you can see all the kinds of different things that we do here um, and yeah, thanks for watching.